阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, today we'll continue with the Tai Sangka Yin Pian Judaism Response and Retributions. Uh, we have been quite a while with this. You know, and this is a, a long journey, and it's not even half of it, if I may say. And but it has been rewarding to myself, and I hope it's the same for you guys, for everyone else who's watching. Um, because the whole point of us um, having this session, as I have mentioned, uh, we are trying to get a hang of it. Why things happen the way they are? How 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 does one get into a better position in their life in terms of you know, all kinds of position like financial, like you know, all this stuff, right? The 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 health, the um, Wealth, financials, um, the status, you know, being respected, esteemed, prestigious, or you know, being um, healthy, being um, having a good relationship socially, um, improving as well socially, in terms of with other friends, with your family, with your relatives, and all these things are something we yearn for, and they are all part of the ingredients of our you know recipe of happiness. And with that, we can, you know, have a peace of mind and have much more kinder outlook in life and less um, pessimistic and aggressive. So, Tai Sangha Inpin is very important in this treatise on response and retribution because it teaches us those things that, you know, mess it up, things that will cause us unfortunate, uh, cause us a, a um, cause us a peace of mind, right? Hands, our action, our deeds, our speech is messy everywhere. It's not um, at peace because we are um, blinded by the five poison, you know, greed, hatred, ignorance. Those are very general summary by the Buddha, but they are brings the truth in it. You know, if we observe life, if you live life long enough, you observe people around you, yourself, and stuff like that. Um, also, you know, doubt and uh, arrogance. Um, so all these give rise to many misdeeds, you know, wrongful deeds, the evil deeds or um, unwholesome deeds, whatever the way we say it is something that is uh, harming others, harming yourself. Um, and what trying Tyson Gai is trying to do is trying to list it out for us so that we can one by one understand why this you know is a transgression, why um, you know we shouldn't do this. You know, that's why we're here. We, t we learn about this. So today we talk about part nine, uh, conceal unwholesome deeds. Um, as of last week, we have um, dabbled uh, quite a bit with the first two phrases. This is this part won't be too long because it's a it's a short and sweet one. So we have um, about three clauses, three groups of clauses in total, um, but they are quite. Um, crucial for us to uh, take note because this one focus on something that is beneath the surface you know deep inside your psyches deep inside your mind um, you know those kind of behaviors you know that was wired in you um, due to either you know upbringings um, your also your past life it has factor in it the kind of habits you have the, 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 the way you think the kind of uh, the mode of thinking, the mode of treating something. In this case, you have someone who, you know, is full of envy, uh, jealousy, and dissatisfaction. And when they see someone reaching that satisfaction of, you know, either being rich and esteemed, or you know, being well-rounded uh, skills, they start to defame. You know, they they react out of that without putting a pause into it. And allowing the worst part of themselves to show, because all this is because of ignorance. You know, ignorance of how people came to their wealth, power, 
And if we do not understand the law of cause and effect, do not understand we reap what we sow, and do not um, have full confidence, you know, too much doubt, too much loophole, uh, too much doubt in it, we don't understand it, then it's very hard not to give rise to these thoughts of envious, enviousness, you know, being um, being envy, being uncomfortable when you see someone doing very well, but you're not, right? It's always like that. We'll be comparing and trying to, you know, one up. Even it's not like that. We we, we, we have that part of ourselves that we might want to, you know, like, you know, get better and better. If it's not used properly, it will become destructive and be like, start from this kind of thoughts you know i hope that you know this person will fall in grace doing something scandalous that will you know make society disappoint in him or no longer esteem no longer respected or when he uh, wishes wealth to be you know taken away coughing up you know, by his um children uh, who, who is uh, in argument and not in harmony stuff like that is very um subtle very poisonous you know um if if it's not properly used so understand karma will help us to know that why people are the the way they are, and it's just um, hurting you from actually improving your life. It diverts you from that um, point. So last week we basically just talked about this one, and um, and you know why are we in this world? You know where are we going from here? Those things, you know, gives rise to the question, you know, extrapolate from this, because why is someone richer, why is someone born impoverished and sad, you know, and being aware and enlightened, we start with understanding cause and effect. Even if we can't see it in our eye, before our eyes, we need to have faith in the, um, how to say, character of person who share it, like Buddha. We have, we understand this person is not, they have no motive to lie. They don't need to. He does not need fame. He already has fame when he was born. He does not need money. He's a prince. He does not need uh, anything from us. But, you know, trying to show us a path where we can be better and better and better. Eventually, you know, no longer creating the condition of our sufferings. Um, so those things takes time. And it's always okay to think, why is this person better than me? Why is he so... Um, so well-rounded, but I'm not. This is a very normal question. When you have this unequal condition, obviously people will ask. Um, that problem is not asking questions. The problem is putting prejudice or um, preconceived or um, bias or stuff like that before uh, on top of it, before you actually being humble enough to look at the thing more objectively, right? We can't be 100% objective, but we can't just um, immediately label things as oh, those people must have exploited many people and then we need to overthrow it, stuff like that. Granted, there are people like that. They're at the top. They were exploiting. They were using their power and position to get even more wealth and even more power. But the thing is, um, we can't dwell on this emo uh, this stage because you already seen the consequences in history after this revolution after that revolution after this killing and one one war after another and an equality has the equality been achieved has it been fully uh, attained it, it's not it's not the solution you know those are all patchworks they are good you know in the way that it's restructuring a little bit that you know everyone had a goal and but those are only conditions. They are not the cause. The actual cause has to come from somewhere where everyone, you know, can relate to it, can, you know, can 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 be part of it. You know, that's the truth, right? Otherwise, it will be just, you know, theory. So what what happens is when everyone has a different habits, right? Say that you born. You and that, uh, you and your neighbor kids born together in the same time, same place, same gender, exactly the same physics and stuff. But you have a different conditions. You know, um, that's if you start on the same point. You know, start from the same starting line. The problem is not everyone starts on the same starting line. Some people already have 
accumulated a lot of um, experience, you know, and you ha only happen to start in at this point, they already accumulate a tons. All right. The problem is we have lifespan issues. We need to renew our body in a sense of you know rebirth and death, rebirth and death. Um, and hence, this is why when two person appears to be the same in the beginning, maybe twins, even twin brothers, when but their habit can be quite different, right? So th those are those looks, those attitude, and everything has to be um, based something beyond what we can see, and but it it has to be reasonable as well. Um, so without making it too weird, uh, too how to say, too off putting. We are okay to have these kind of you know, questions. Like, why is this not the same? And that will lead you to find the answers. Once you find the answers, you will be able to. Um, and and when when that thing cracks, you know, answers you crack open the the mysteries, you will feel at peace. That's the ultimate goal. Otherwise, you know, um, it will lead to this. You know, people who force into a wrong conclusion. You know. The only way I can make it equal is to take what take theirs, take what belongs to us, justifying one wrong thinking after another, and then wrong thinking becomes wrong act. You know, you 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 reap, you you um, rob people's uh, property, wealth, and stuff like that, and then only end up be becoming the person you hate the most because you're the one who have the most wealth and property, and now and doesn't change. Right, whatever in the name of whatever ideology they have, right. Obviously, in a broader perspective, it might be better in 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 in, in that certain time. But those are, like I said, this this does not scratch the each. Those are very shallow, superficial look because we we are very um, short-lived beings in comparison to the to the world, to the earth, and we are very um, sh that makes us very short-sighted. By impulse, we can see things only you know tomorrow, next day, ten. Uh, uh, and if we go too far beyond, um, we need to have some someone who can guide us. You know, we need to have a more mature outlook in that. We need to go beyond um, now, you know, beyond beyond what we understand. And this um, karma is meant to be, you know, tangible. You can see it. Obviously, intangible as well in the terms of you can't see it now because you can't see what you did in the past that makes you who you are and makes you better than someone else who is supposed to be the same point or makes you worse than someone else who already starting earlier than you. Um, you know. So, <clears throat> um, in Buddhism, we say that in the human life, we are all about repaying the debt. Rinzen Chou Ye is... It, 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 Sounds very pessimistic, very sad. Like, oh yeah, so the whole life is to pay debt. You know, it sounds terrible. Like, yeah, you 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 bog down with uh, home loan and all this stuff. It's it's coming that right and and but if you settle down and you know let the emotion reside and actually observe, you know, invite everyone to have a look. You know, everyone in their own life. Their, you know, walks of life from children to uh, teenagers to young adult to adult to elderly and then pass away. The, the interaction with other people, you know, not one is exactly the same. Why is it like that? You know, why, why, why is, why is you know, your relationship with your parents so good, but the other family's relationship are not so good. You know, the parents taking care so well of this kids but the other family the parents don't even care about him her just toss the money and tell them to you know live on your own but some doesn't even come back home there's a very sad meme that we have oh you know your father went out to buy the milk but he never came back the kind of the kind of um meme uh, but it's very sad when we think about it um but yet that happens every day in our life you know Despite whether we want or not want, it happens. Um, so many things against our wishes, or so many things not with our wishes. 
uh, and that makes us think. You know, why is why is this like what what is the, what's the force behind it? You know, in the absence of powers to see, ability to understand, some people might jump conclusion. They might attribute to some external force. You know, attribute to other people. You know, attribute to some spirits or attribute to some imaginations they have. All right. And everyone seeing what they see, what they want to see, you know, fitting the mode as they see fit. And it's like, you know, I, I like this uh, analogy. You, everyone wrapping their clothes, the bandana or their neck, uh, their eyes. That means everyone's blind, right? And in the absence of sight, they touch, they came across a elephant. And when they touch the elephant, because they never seen an elephant before, they're born blind or something. And when they touch the elephant, they they only use what they understand to analyze it. One touches the the, the tail, thinking it's a snake. Maybe he's seen snake before he gone blind. One touching the leg, the stubby leg, thinking it's a tree log. The other one touching a trunk, thinking is a I don't know a twig or something. Uh, so everyone's analyzing from what they understand, from what they have. No one gets the whole piece because they are lacking that ability to see or they are like the bandana covering your eyes they were covered by 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 the obstacles you know and on the only way to actually see things as it is is to take off the veil and you know, to cover your face and see it as it is you know, without imagining problem is we have no ability to do it it's our reality right now we can't see it um we have the ability to see it, but we can't. We can't. We can't use it. And it's like you have multi-million-dollar oil storage right under your house. You can be a trillionaire, but you you don't know about it, or you don't have the tools to tap into it, right? So everyone has that. So this leaves us a question: What should we do then? You know, staying in ignorance is not really. Um, in my case, at least, it's it's not something I want to be. I don't want to be in ignorant um, because you know, blindly do stuff, blindly do things, things without see seeing as it is. You would eventually lead yourself to a lot of mistakes that sometimes it is irreparable, irredeemable. You know, only on on, the only path is to suffer the consequences, and it sometimes it's too far. This is a really big roundabout. Not saying that no, not saying that anyone is in, in in cannot be redeemed. But the problem is, it's it's very sometimes when you off path too, when you off the track too much, it's taking a long, long, long time. I'm talking about lifetimes. Come back. It's not easy. So back to the point here, right? We need to first understand um, what we know, you know, objectively as piece of the puzzle you know you did touch the elephant you did touch the skin and all that and it did feel like a rope or a snake but it's not you can't see it so you can't just jump to conclusion second is um you know have a well-founded um understanding of yourself of your limitations and then have that hunger for truth seeking for truth the hunger is because this condition is plaguing you from getting better because you you stumble in the dark. You're touching things like in this transgression, you know, this kind of mindset. Um, it's hurting yourself in the end. It's hurting other people. It's hurting yourself, and and because you spend all the energy on others, you know, focus too much on you know, other people's achievement and stuff. And not using the right kind of lens to use it means you drain your energy on trying to dismiss that person, trying to make that person lower because you can't get it so no one can get it. That kind of twisted mindset. That is very sad because if we use the energy instead to, to you know observe the good part, say this person is very hardworking. Yeah, I'm hardworking too. Why am I not getting it? The problem, and if we all focus on the results, the fruit, then it's very hard for us to focus on what really matters, the kind of attitude that the person might have, 
that are you know you can learn from, you know, that will improve your relationship with other people, and hence in- increase your fortune indirectly, right? Because it's all about connections and stuff like that. But one thing I learned about work and is connections, connections, connections. It's without connections, you can't go anywhere because everything is reliant on conditions. And if we too, you know, eagerly trying to look for connections, which is nothing wrong with that, but uh, we, instead we need to focus more on our quality of connection as well. You can make a lot of connections randomly, go to a street and just make connection with anyone. But the problem is quality connections. And that needs something smarter. You need to be a magnet to the right kind of people. To do that, you need to be that kind of people. Otherwise, how can you attract that kind of people? Mm-hmm. So same goes for wealth, same goes goes for prestigious prestige, for esteem. You know, why are these things so sought after? Because they offer comfort, they offer sort of happiness, but there should not be the end goal itself. It's just a sight. It's just a consequences in a sense of a person being respectful, dignified at heart. That means they do not give rise to um, unwholesome thoughts, deeds. You know, they clean their act uh, very well, as in they, they, they constantly refreshing themselves. You know, they don't complain for the sake of complaint. They know what's the, they see the problem, they try to find a way to solve it. Just like Buddha see the problem of life and death. When they make, what makes him so great, worthy of respect, all right, is he did not just sit here and say, hey man, that's it, you know, we can't do anything. He has a very strong drive to find, you know, no matter how hard it takes, maybe he might lose his life in the process, but he wants to find a solution to this problem. Because this thing is actually a problem. He recognized the problem as a problem. All right? A lot of us just take it as is. Because for, in the absence of better wisdom you know sometimes we just can't overcome this karmic force it's like trying to swim against the ocean tile it's not impossible but you know it's hard and how long can you last you know, it takes a lot of practice and to practice you need that motivation what kind of motivation it is right so in our case like Buddha has done this and I mean of course he's Appearing now at the eight thousand time according to one of the, one of the sutra, eight thousand time as a Buddha. Of course, that means that he already has been practicing, attained that level a long time ago. But doesn't mean that he does not struggle. Back then, he still struggle is the same thing as you are, and he still have his trouble. You know, his his heart to clean. He needs to clean his mind as well, and it takes him many lifetime to do it. And this it makes us appreciate how hard it is. And actually give us confidence, which is the point I'm trying to do now is what, what which is the point I'm trying to get at confidence or faith in this case, the faith we talk about is the confidence in that person that you know that person has the experience has gone through what you've gone through, has a wealth of understanding knowledge gained directly from first hand experience. He sees the elephant as the elephant, the entirety of it. None of them is entirely correct. None of them is entirely wrong, but they are blindfolded. They can't see the whole thing. Hence, they can't reach the desired result because it's not, it's just the cause is not right. How can you have a good effect? And to have someone who are able to see things, you know, in the, in, in its entirety, telling you how you, step by step, how to get out of it, get out of your ignorance, is precious. That means you no longer have to suffer from this um, ignorance. So back to this, you know, why is people not equal? Why are people uh, you know, not having the equal? Uh, why is equality so hard to, achieve, to be achieved? You know, why, why are we not born equal, in a sense? Right? Despite what we say, we are all born equal, in a sense, but we are but the conditions that we are trust upon is different. Some people are just born in wealth. Some people are born in poverty. Uh, some people has a very, very, very loving relationship with their family. Some people has terrible, re- troublesome one, their own family. And 
one of the venerable Master Ching Kong, when he go to Hong Kong for Dharma talk back in 1977, I'm actually reading the script, uh, he was living in one of the old venerable's house, um, not house, his um, Dharma talk, Dharma hall. And in this hall, it has a um, set of words, you know, the Chinese like to write a pair of um, probes, you know, poems, proverbs. So one of them says, husband and wife is a affinity. They are good affinity, they are bad affinity. All right. And, you know, bad affinity means they um, trying to get back at each other in vengeance based on the past. And then the second half of the clause or proverb is your children. You know, having children is like having debt. And one of them is, you know, you have a debit. One, the other one, you have a creditor, you have a debitor. Someone, someone has come to claim the debt from you or someone's trying to repay in, you know, their debt to you. So, if there is nothing, if there's no, if you guys don't owe them, if you didn't owe each other, if the parents and children didn't owe each other, they won't become parents and children. <laughs> so, husband and wife won't become husband and wife if there's no good affinity or bad affinity. All right, it has to have active affinity. If you have no affinity, you'll just be strangers. Right, strong, very strong affinity to become husband and wife. The thing is that quality of the relationship depends on the, you know, the affinity. What is affinity? The past, um, everything, all sorts of interaction, the smile, or the the anger, you know, the talk, the way you talk, the tone. Um, what you did to her, what he did to you, or what what you did to him, what did she do, did to you, you know, in the past, say to you, all sorts of interaction that accumulates over time, you know, good and bad, in the terms of pleasant or unpleasant, you know, um, and whether you hold a grudge or not is another element. There's so f that's why it's very complicated to talk about karma in such a detailed way because. Um, it's better to see it rather than just talk about it. The way why Buddha has to talk about it because a lot of us can't see it. Um, if you sitting next to him, maybe he can, but now he's not here. He didn't appear before us anymore. So you, you the, your best way is to listen from it, and it's a very sound logic. So in a sense, the, the other half, you know, if your children has nothing, they owe you nothing, or you owe nothing to your children, they will not come. They become your children. There's nothing to, f there's no condition for it to happen. Right? We're all saying biologically, you know, this is how you become, have a children, but those are conditions. Those are not the cause, you know. What makes this your children, not that your children? What makes your children your children? You know, why why is this children always, uh, in terms of re um, practical speaking, uh, practically speaking, like, why is some of the children taking such a long time to say graduate or leave your house and then eating in a lot of your budget? You know, you work hard, you may get a good bonus, but then you, most of the money was spent on your children. Um, some of them are just normal, like once they finish uni or stuff like that, they leave, they no longer be a you know financial burden to you. That means you have paid it, pay for it. And if you do well, some of them might even pay back to you. Of course, you know, we don't want to make it too mechanical. It's human, you know, relationships. And these are, these are just simply looking at a very big scope and, you know, very, very, very macro kind of look at, at the entirety of human humanities. And um, if it's not an enlightened being who said that, it's just arrogance, but this is something that someone sees it as is. Observe many, many people, and maybe you know understand not just this current interaction, previous interactions. Right? If we can believe in past life, at least think of you know holding a grudge. It's a very common thing. Yeah, this thing did. This guy did to me something uh, five months ago. You know, he took my um, uh, you know, 
took my credit or my work. So now I want to get back at him. Those things make sense to us. So who says it does not carry from the past life as well, right? Same goes for future. So what you did now is uh, whatever interaction you have will leave an imprint in their mind. And this will lead to, you know, a future a cause of for the future interaction. So everything you do is a cost for any future uh, effect, you know. You say something nice and genuine, kind to them. Sometimes it might sound uh, not as um, sweet to the ear because it's a harsh a truth. You may be blunt, but you try your best to, to give the best advice so that that person can do best. In the future, when he reaches that point, he will think back and thank you and you know, maybe even able to help you. So in, in, in a sense, no matter what kind of human relationship you have with your family or your people around you, um, there's only one principle. Always, always, you know, avoid making enemies. You know, avoid, um, no matter how hard it is, if you understand how serious it is, it is the consequences of having a grudge and let that grudge becomes hatred and ended up in huge in a big way, you know, becomes killing and stuff like that, um, then you will no longer have any energy to want to have a bad, um, to, 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 you know, no long, it's not unwise anymore. You just understand, like, there's just nothing for you, nothing in it for you to, you know, make enemies out of anyone. And then, if people come to you negatively, we need to be more um, understanding doesn't mean that we can't bounce back. But the problem is, you know, this is a process. Trust the process, right? When we talk about that. We need to like understand that if we take it in, you know, as in personal direct attack, of course it will be painful. Of course you will want to fight back, hit back. Or maybe, you know, if you receive insult on your family, you know, of course you will bounce back. But does that help to elevate the situation? You know, being reactive to this is a net human, very human thing. But at the same time, you need to take a very inhuman energy of patience to actually overcome this very human stuff. Otherwise, you get stuck in this condition. And that's where practice comes in. Understanding comes in. So if you understand these two proverbs, you know, what, how do you summarize human relationships? Grudge, gratitude. That's one pair. The other pair is debt. You owe each other. Someone owe you or you owe someone. All right, debit credit. Put in a very cold way. All right, debt management and anger management. <laughs> debt management and uh, 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 and and then and, and and gratitude or grudge. You know, the two types. All right. If there's no grudge, if there's no gratitude, if there's no debt to each uh, one another in terms of karmic debt, you will never become friends or any even acquainted. See, look in our daily life, we walk by the streets every day, so many people passing by you. you know, why is that person saying hi to you? Why is the other person not saying hi to you? Why is that person smiling at you? Why is the other person not smiling at you? Everyone has interaction with you is a continuation of the previous inter interactions. All right? So, yeah. Those are, those are how, this is how affinity works. Some light affinity means you only met once and then you never see that guy at all, forever. Some who has deeper affinity, you keep seeing them every day. All right? Every moment. That means you have a deep affinity and deeper it is, you know, the more close you are to each other in terms of your interaction more frequent and it becomes family you know the closer it gets it gets family and husband and wife even closer stuff like that so when Buddha tells us you know human life is all about you know fulfilling you know the karmic uh, obligation it means you know fulfilling the debt you owe them or they owe you or fulfilling the grudge that you carry on from the past towards that person or, or gratitudes from the past towards that person. Uh, 
everyone in six rims will have to go through this. So this is why Buddha is here, trying to tell us all these six rims about how do we, you know, be patient, you know, be able to receive a, 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 a very um, sharp remark, being being able to, you know, control your anger, you know, med practice meditative tranquility. All these is tools to help you to, you know, engage with your body or emotions, you know, in a way that you can overcome it. And and if you're able to pass this test, uh, no longer create the karma, then you of course you get liberated. You're no longer recreating the same scenario again. So if you're wise, if you really learn about you know what Buddha has to say, then you can spin everything into lead everything back to Dharma. You know, good gratitude. Uh, those good affinity you have with these people, you have a good vibe, you have a good thing going on with this person, you can turn it into you know, Dharma affinity. You know? It means it was directed, that the focus is no longer on you owe me, I owe you. It becomes, let's go to, to Pure Land together. Let's cultivate the path of liberation together. Make aware of these teachings in the way they can accept. Right? And then eventually your motivation becomes less one-to-one -one personal, more, you know, broader, wider, deeper, you know. I, I really want to help you to, you know, um, to maximize the best, you know, in your limited lifespan. Or, you know, to make, most, make the most out of your current life and, and slowly lead them to the Dharma, which is the path of enlightenment. Right. Of course, the negative, same goes for the negative karma. That one is even more important. If you don't fight with them, if you show care, if you understand, you know, be empathized and able to, you know, process it as well, the insult and the sharp remarks um, with less emotion, with more understanding, with more, but I will, then the better you are at, you know, stop at stopping the recreation <laughs> Of your suffering, because if you bounce back, you know, because they would they do that to you because you owed them something or you did something bad to them in the past that made them feeling begrudged towards you. So there is a reason behind it. Otherwise, why would a why wouldn't Joe from the other uh, town shout at me? Why would this person shout at me? You know, why why is this person? my friend why isn't that person my friend why is uh, Smith my friend why isn't Bacon my friend stuff like that All right um, yeah let's not go too deep into it so now we move on to another phrase to entertain adulterers and perverted thoughts in one's heart now this is very common <laughs> unfortunately um, yeah I'm this disclaimer, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like escaping from this problem as well, you know, because there's a saying in Buddhism that hits straight to the point. If our lust is not strong, we will not be born in Pure Land. I mean, we will not be reborn in this Saha world, the world of, you know, difficulties, troubles. Saha is Kanran, the Sujie, world that everyone is you know, have to deal with imperfections, have to deal with a lot of difficulties. So here we talk about um, a scenario where, you know, when you saw someone, literal translation is you see someone beautiful, uh, you know, physically appealing, your heart has, you know, you give rise to a thought to want to have that person, want to own it, uh, want to pursue it, and want to continue to act on it, on the lustful thoughts. So that is a very, how to say, human thing as well, right? But to the scale of this, you know, that to the scale of un how unleashed, you know, we are as human species in this desire is very um, unprecedented in our current time compared to a long history in the past because um, 
if you look at history, there are you know eras where in, like in Roman Empire they are very liberal in terms of sexual sexually very liberal. They do things you know in open, you know that, that kind of act, and and and. One way of saying it is the decline is sure to follow very soon after. Decline of the empire. Like consequences, right? Everyone's too focused on this kind of a mateship, but mateship between you know, to satisfy the lust and forgot about the actual dangers or, you know, managing the countries. So those things are it's kinda of like an primordial battle, you know, your desire and your obligation on your, on your, um, your desire versus your conscience, in a sense, you know, I need to do this right. Because the desire is always, you know, very in your face, straight away. You don't even need to think about it because we cultivate the habit so many, many lifetimes. And this side where you actually, you know, trying to fulfill your obligation or trying to do right by others, by yourself, especially, by not giving rise to that kind of perverted thoughts, is weaker because you didn't um, practice enough, you know, and you allowed yourself to be um, more immersed in that. That's applied to myself, I, and, and I can't say to everyone else, but the problem is, if um, we look at the human world, human history, most of us have a lot of mix of this so in current society the level of you know how unfettered how 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 to say rampant excessive it is is unprecedented to any time in the recorded history right uh, because you know back then we might have not have full freedom but the, the the vision is very clear right not all divisions are good, but sometimes some divisions are need to be made, as in how you, um, you know, uh, in, 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 let's just use a case, because I, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, well, the ancient Chinese have a system in place, right, in the Book of Rights, so Book of, you know, how be, Book of Decency, Li Ji, you know, Book of Rights, how do you conduct yourself properly? Uh, one of them is male yeah, boys and girls when they reach the age of five they can no longer uh, stay in the same room it's because when they get more mature that thoughts come up and you would need to you know, avoid that sort of condition right Usui right oh no not, not, not same place they can't even sit on the next to each other so it's like a boys school good grammar school in a sense um that's applied at the custom of that time, you know, is to avoid thoughts, you know, avoid that condition, you know, uh, for them to focus too much on romance and forget about, you know, improving, cultivating themselves. So nowadays we see in the, you know, news, uh, young pregnancy, teen pregnancy is very common because it's unfettered. It's um everything's encouraging you. You watch the movie, it's encouraging you. You watch all sorts of medium, it's encouraging you. Right? And it's very easy to access those kind of um material, pornographic materials that, you know, tainted the heart very at a very young age. Right? Many of us are uh, fallen victim to it. I have to confess about it. Because this is this is very easily accessible. It's very common. To, and the reason why we are born in this world as well, the you know, the pre-existing condition as well, as a as a human in the desire realm, we already have so such a deep desire. So those things are not easy to, to overcome. But what we are trying to say is not that extreme. We're just saying that the normal interaction between male and female is already like very very rare rarely seen because everyone just jumps straight into the physical part without proper process in between that is the problem we're trying to talk about we're not saying that we shouldn't have you know a proper relationship between male and female and then leads into you know 
marriage and then have children and stuff like that or having that kind of uh, sexual life but the problem what we're talking about is there is no process anymore becomes anything goes and hence problem like teen pregnancy easily um, occurred to be fair there are in, in Asian times there are also people with you know very young age they already married 16 years old 13 years old however in the interest of that era people's lifespan was shorter not saying that it's right but saying that you know their time their law you know their morals for our case our time we, we, we of course saying that it has to be above 18 but um, this is a very tricky topic to talk about but this is a topic we should not avoid at all not even in Buddhist setting it should always be, be properly treated with respect as well because this affects the human society and Buddhism is part of a society you know it's not it's not telling everyone it would just be a monk you know it's very good to be a monk and even being a monk you also need to overcome this as well uh, it takes the third level of enlightenment which is why I shown last week anagami you know sotapanna and then sakagami anagami the third level anahan to entirely you know let go of the sensual desire you know, desire of the five senses six rooms is intellectual right? five senses and last is chasing after the f pleasure of the flesh many religious texts is talking about it so it's a it's a very common thing and it takes that level of cultivation to fully be independent that means they can't touch you anymore so it's very common and uh, what we wanted to talk about here is sometimes having freedom does not mean it's unfettered you know, there's another word called freedom in chain in the sense of freedom in um, self-restraint in the sense of you don't cross that threshold hence you're no longer creating that trouble that will plague you for the rest of your life you regret right and and this is a protection for yourself as well so giving rise to last rule over the talks in um in the presence of someone who's good looking and stuff like that is in fact how to say destroying our appearance as well in a sense we become more and more hideous in uh even not directly but it becomes your way so in chinese just that you become more and more retreated in that mindset you get caught up in that thinking and you lose that clarity trust me that clarity is so precious just changing the nothing that clarity allows you allows you to be flexible be resilient at any situation because you can see things as it is but if you get too caught up in any of the particular uh, situations in this case you caught up in the last full thought pursuit you lose a lot of your control over your life and become a slave to sensual desire you jump from one relationship to another you change you swap the swap you know your um, partner very frequently that's that's a very unhealthy lifestyle you know we always talk about oh healthy mind healthy body you know mental illness is a problem is sickness in this case it's also unhealthy for, for us obviously you never can use one size one size fits all some people might have a situation you know, uh, with you know relationship they do it properly and nicely okay understandable but we're talking about the the um the act of it right no not not having a peace of mind always want to chase after another thrill excitement so look at think of it like food all right if you eat something very tasty you know of course you want to eat more so you eat more however when you excessively eat it and it becomes a habit always want to chase after you know better taste better texture some exotic taste exotic texture eventually you will realize you you know either 
get obese, which is a light thing, and then um, you get cancer or you get diseased because you excessively indulge in it. And it becomes something pleasurable becomes something torturous, something like hell to you. Same goes for, you know, romantic relationships. Same goes for this sexual relationship as well. If you over pursue it, you see we already have medically called STD, sexually transmitted disease, all this AIDS and stuff like that is coming out from this. Why do you think this thing happened in the first place? You know, this disease. It's because of this unfettered act. It's nothing wrong to pursue someone you like, but it's something wrong if you own if that is the only thing you have in your mind. Because our life has to have a lot more than that one, you know. And you need to prioritize what's important to you. That means restraint. And the more younger you are taught of this restraint, the better you are, easier you are. When you grow up in face of this problem, because because um, if you that's why it's very conflicting, right? If you say, "Oh, you want the liberal, you want to be free and all that, you can do whatever you want," you know, freedom, liberate uh, our sexualities and sixties and nowadays. One thing is allow you to express freely as well. However, we are not perfect beings. We have no self self restraint in terms of uh, innate. We have that restraint. We have that bottom line, but we 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 usually go over, and then we taste the bitter end, and then we start to think back. Okay, I need to calm down a little bit. But by then, you already have all this disease, broken relationships. You know, your parents are already like getting sick of your shenanigans. You know. A lot of women find troubles, or you know, many unclaimed children littered around. Unfortunately, you know, and 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 think of the perspective of other side. You know, you have the tree for ten minutes, and then what left behind? You have bastard children. Or what? Um, so I sound like an ancient person. Okay, no, like you have the unlegitimate children, <laughs> bastards. That's like very old. Bastard in terms of you know, like illegitimate illegitimate children of a child of a noble but we don't have noble anymore but you have a lot of you know children that are you know having fatherless motherless uh, or have a messy family life because they don't know who is who you know and one keeps changing partners and stuff like that think on their perspective what would they feel they feel powerless they feel like you know everything is very futile very um, unstable and children especially when they're young they are they in need of a very stable environment and a, and a loving and, and, and proper environment to properly grow them as a bright young man and young woman right and you need to have role model example you, you can see how hard it is it takes a village to raise a kid and to have children you know, growing up in this chaotic environment yes there are some Jewels made out of this, you know, they get resilient, they take care of their children, they take care of their own siblings, you know, when the parents are not properly doing the job or, you know, they split. Mother ran away, father drink alcohol or the other way around. Like those tragedy can be reduced a little bit if we have as a collective society be more aware of it. I can't say, oh, we can have to go back to the old times where there are stricter sense. Those things will come naturally by the society's demand. As we can observe when people get too much, you know, of anything. Say back then, people smoke cocaine as a normal uh, medicine ailment. But now they realize this is not good. This is poisonous. They smoke tobacco back then, right? In On a plane, airplane, right? there's just the tobacco seeds. If you look at the airplane that was retrofitted, they still have that tobacco seeds in it. It's like no one smokes tobacco nowadays. Why? Because it's harmful. Same goes for this um, mindset about you know pros- sexual pros- promis- promiscuity, which is you know unfettered act, you know uh, uh, pursuit of lust. So those things are 
poisonous in terms of the consequences is so painful. Not just physically, it's 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 hurting you as well. In Buddhism, we actually mention about that. All right. Yes, we want to have no oppression. We want to have more, you know, freedom of expression. We also want to um, have a more relaxed society, not not very strict, you know. But we can't have have it all, you know. The consequences of too much, you know, unfettered. Um, Content, you know, like right now, sexual content, it's everywhere in every movie, every shows, even some of the children textbook. I I, I once uh, watch a YouTube of a pastor that gets really pissed at you know one of the school board in US US pastor, one of the small town councilmen. He stand up and confront the councilman. He read a very jarring, you know children book that's meant to be under age of five or something young pure innocent child and you know they read those kind of very I don't want to describe it here very jarring kind of sentences of sexual acts in the children books of course they do it in a roundabout way and it was like is this something you show to your children you know have you done your job vetting these kind of materials it's like, this is a disgrace this is a shame and like you know, the fact that you feel uncomfortable when I read it out loud in front of he, in front of a crowd means that it's something that should not be shown to the public, let alone the kid. This common sense is gone, right? It's maybe you know what I'm trying to say is there's a line we need to draw the line. Now I'm talking about this very bottom line kind of thing, but what about what's the perks of holding yourself back? You know in presence of your lustful pursuit, right? How do we how do we manage the relationship with this? Right? Obviously eventually you want to purify it to the point where it's not a problem. You, know, you can appear as that form but you no longer be affected by it. But that's not something we can reach right now in our lifetime. If you go to Pure Land, yes. But I don't want to restrict to that particular crowd. I want to be make it more accessible to everyone. So first, when you look at this society, you know, if we pursued not just lust, we pursued fame, pursued um, wealth, pursued maximum profit, maximizing profit, bottom line mentality, scrape the bottom uh, of the barrel, uh, pursued um, food, a lot of um, uh, cozy life, all you get is a small benefit. Why is it small? Because to get a benefit, you need to understand how long the benefit lasts. You know, how wide is the con- uh, 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 How long does it last on you? You know, not just physically, mentally as well. And and what other? Is there any consequences? Is there any side effect after you pursue this? Right. Say if you have vast amount of wealth, what does it mean to you? Of course obvious thing you can buy anything you want you can buy a company you can buy anything you can do so many things but what is the responsibility or consequences that comes with it you have to manage so many estates trust yes you can have higher lawyers and stuff you can have an easy life it's a good problem to have but it's also a it's also a huge problem and the social standard is different now everyone look at you from that anger no one look at you as who you really are very few people would right people would look at you as a human walking wallet something like that I don't know that kind of admiration admiring gaze is not genuine not long lasting it's just because you're you're wealthy, you're rich. Of course, there are deeper one where they see your capability to build your wealth and stuff. That's impressive. But it's only one one side, you know. I'm not saying that you should not, but everything has a plus and minus. No matter where you are, whatever position you are, and you lose that kind of a down to earth con- interaction with everyday people because you're already up there. You can't. 
So same goes for um, same goes for everything we enacted as a society in laws and stuff like that. We no longer put the bottom line safety net for this kind of um, interaction between male and female. We let it be, you know loose, very loose morals in the sense, in that sense. And the consequences right now you can see is a lot more, you know, tragedies, you know, families not working together or families getting, like I said, more chaotic. And you know, another thing is abortion as well. It's another sensitive topic, but we need to look at it in a broader perspective, you know. Like, the reason there is a problem with this is because of unfettered, uncontrolled sexual misconduct, right? A proper relationship, you know, children born out of that, very seldom will touch abortion. It will always be either, you know, problem of physical problem, like the baby no longer able to survive prematurely, you know, born and then unable to get oxygen. Those are different things. It's very seldom to have a portion when you this children is coming out of a normal, stable, loving relationship. Um, of course, I'm very aware that I can't be very blatant, you know, be very like chest up and say, "Yeah, you shouldn't do." That. But I, I, I am not um, a fan of any kind of harmful, deep, to- uh, harmful action against living beings. Yeah. Doesn't care if it's conscience or not conscience or whatever the argument is. Oh, the baby is actually quite arrogant. Oh yeah, that baby will not have the um, sentience. How, how do you know? Electromagnetic wave? This, this is not right. You know, there is... I understand there is a need for it. Not saying that I agree, but it's, there is the problem of why did it happen in the first place? It's, this is the hard thing, right? If it, in the first place, if it has a very strong safety net for young children, you know, to have a, to have a well protected environment, right? Let them open up to this kind of matters when they are more mature, properly guided in a sense of maturely. You can have fun with it, but you have to be mature about it. You have to understand what it means when you do the deed. You know, just because you wear the protection or anything does not mean you're safe 100%. You need to be, be prepared for the consequences for that. It's a serious thing because it's it's something that you open up to another person. You open up your personal space for another person. And if you treat it like, you know, t- take away, anyone can just have take away. Of course, it's cheap. You cheapen yourself. You cheapen your dignity. You cheapen their uh, your partner as well. If you treat it seriously, you treat it this as a one precious part of yourself that you know only the right person should have it, and you being you know cultivate yourself well, you know, and then you attract the kind of people that are decent, right? Then you wouldn't have too much of this problem. So this kind of teaching needs to be taught um, by parents to children most effectively. School can do a, so much, can only do so much. This is essentially a family education, but the kind of cultural mindset that we should have. There are many frameworks to do it, right? In, in our Asian society, we have this Confucius thinking. In the Western society, they have Christian family in a sense and in this sense it's a safety net uh, that needs to be appreciated more right of course it's not perfect of course it can be restrictive of course it can be a bit too dictating sometimes you know, sometimes overbearing uh, but we cannot deny the safety net it provides you know and even when when we have this problem of young kids or young children teenagers have pregnancies those communities have that strength to garner that sort of help you know, 
to have the baby safely delivered, adopted by other people. Those are more humane um, approach towards it. Uh, if this does happen, and it will happen a lot more, unfortunately. So what we can do right now is, you know, we approach this kind of teaching more often in a more sensible, more rational, more say, reflective tone rather than, you know, trying to argue pro and anti. Stop painting this in black and white. You know, stop painting the young children's life in black and white. Um, I don't care if it's in the baby stage, uh, stage one or three, two and three, they are not a product um, to be carved as a, you know, a thing. They are sentient beings, right? Sentient beings that does not they they are not waiting for the body to form to get in there. They already have make a choice because of your affinity with the parents. This is something serious and something needs to be some it's very hard because right now we have a very different consensus. Granted I actually appreciate it because it allows more variety of opinion, but it can be confusing. So going back to the point, you know, why why did it why is this problem happening in the first place? You know, step too many children's, you know, have not having a stable family. Hence unstable mentality is more likely to happen. Hence more problems in their behaviors. And they are the victims of this kind of environment. Obviously you have karmic dimension in it. In the past they may have committed that similar deeds that put them in the current position. But if you go back to how did it all begin, it's this lack of this kind of plus and minus teaching. You know, like why do we need to hold back when we can just have fun committing this kind of act with one another? We're not harming anyone, we're not hurting anyone, you know, Ni Qing Wo you know, you won, I won, so we do it. That's why we need come. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. All right. So here Buddha has mentioned, all right, a person who do not um, commit adultery with other man's wife or other man's other person's partners, you know, uh, and if their mind is not dwelling on um, this kind of um, pervert perversions and lustful thoughts. They will get five benefits. See? Very sensible teaching. What's the benefit? What's the harm? It's not too hard to say about that to the world. Alright? Nothing leaves cause and effect, consequences. Why did that? What is the act that leads to these consequences? Good, bad consequences. So, why is the good consequences? Remember, no sexual misconduct. Is one of the five things to be prevent precepts. You know, one of the five precepts. No sexual misconduct. And in terms of no committing sexual misconduct, there are five benefits. First benefit, protect your wealth. You do not lose your wealth. Think about how much money they lost in pursuit of prostitution, in pursuit of, you know, spending too much unnecessary jewelries and stuff like that. Uh, or to your mistress and stuff like that. Maybe it's a bit cliche, but I think it still happens. Uh, I don't know. Um, and also, in terms of wealth that disappears, in terms of, in many other ways, fines and suddenly your bad business, we call it bad luck, in terms of your business. Those things actually is indication of your fortune falling apart. And fortune, good fortune, like I say, is a universal currency. Convert in money, convert in good relationship, convert in you know good job precision, convert in peace of mind. This think of it as a universal currency that is very important to our well being. You know, it's a it's a it's a currency we need. Just like why do you go to work every day to earn a salary? Because you need to eat, you need to have a you know, you need to nourish yourself, you know, have a place to live. Same goes for good fortune. Those are universal currency that you need. You need good fortune to meet a good partner as well. You need good fortune to have a good uh, um, relationship with 
uh, other people. You need to have good fortune in a good to get landed a good job, in a good career. So in this case, not committing your sexual misconduct, able to withhold that desire that you have, allows you to preserve your fortune. That's the very least thing we should do to protect ourselves. Second thing is to, number, number two is, you have no fear, you're fearless. Because you're not doing something behind people's back. Of course, you're fearless. You do not fear, you know, powerful people. You do not fear, you know, police. You do not fear pe um, those people in charge of laws. <laughs> you, you have no fear towards, in the sense of, not arrogance, but in, in the sense of your peace of mind. You, know, you, you, you follow the rules, you obey, you do the right thing. You have no fear about it. You have no um, bars be held. You just, you know, peace of mind. You have a peace of mind. You live proudly, you feel happily. <sighs> Number three, you have no fear of other people. You know, if you look at someone else who has done too much of that, all right, you, you will usually lose that, you know, that light, your heart, light heartedness. You get very heavy, you get very... Um, everything you do is open, public. You don't have nothing to hide. You can see that kind of person. You can see that person is very open. It's very, you know, very present. They're no longer hiding from the gaze of the people. You know, psychologically, they are safe, secure. They are. This is what I mean by safety net. This is very powerful because you need to have that peace of mind before you can achieve greater heights in your career. Committing sexual misconduct, whether with other people's wife or with, you know, even just a normal uh, single person, but you're committing this kind of sexual misconduct, you will always be very, you always want to hide things. It's just psychology, you know, you just, because those acts were usually done in private. And if we do too much of it, of course, we reinforce that kind of mindset. Everything you see is colored with that kind of lens. And, and that habit will ingrain your day-to-day -day interaction. So every time you look at people, you don't dare to look at them in, 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 in directly. But in the way, you're lacking that light in your heart. Everything is weighing down. It's not as light as it is. Because if you're light-hearted, if, you know, if you're not like too, too burdened and everything, you, you're able to see things as is. You're able to face the world. You know, no matter how hard it is, you you have that, like I say, the clarity of mind. Right. So those are number three. These are our, what we call the benefits of the world. Worldly benefits. You know, benefits that you can get in this worldly day to day. They are not even the main thing. They are not the big benefit. The real benefit, you know, those are just bonus. The real thing, the salary, real benefit is if they do not practice Buddhism, they do not, they do not uh, you know, in contact with Buddhism, they did not go to Pure Land, they did not vow to bond to Pure Land, their karma naturally will be in heaven. They will naturally be either human or heaven. And if they in heaven, in desire realm, because they didn't practice meditative tranquility, they're still stuck in the Desire realm, that means there's male and female. Uh, basically, you have a very you know, dignified um, life, a very decent and upright person as your wife or husband. Um, number five is you will return from the heavens, and if you you know finish your routine, your enjoyment perks in heaven, you go back to human realms. You know, your spouse will always be the upright person. They will not do that kind of deeds with others. And whatever you do, is it's proper. It's very, how to say, peace of mind in a sense. All this is talking about peace of mind. You know, your wealth is not taken away from you. Uh, you're not afraid of the law. Because why? Why do you afraid of the law if you do everything right? In a way of, you know, according to the law, according to the, Conscience. Number three is you have no 
fear of people. You don't fear people's gaze. You don't avert people's gaze. You look them in, in the eye. You just be with them. Um, because you have nothing to fear about. You have peace of mind. All this is talking about peace of mind because sexual music contact is directly opposite to it. You're hiding like a snake, like a, like a rat doing things uh, that is exciting, but you cannot show it to the public because it's disgusting in a sense. So, um, so first three is about human current uh, benefit and the last two is in heavens. The, the if they do not go to pure land, if they vow upon the pure land, of course it's easy. It's easier because it's pure land, pure, pure heart. It's just perfect. So um, Buddha say that if a per this is the opposite, so plus and minus. So what is the cons of committing sexual misconduct? If people are unfettered in their uh, sexual pursuits, for example, you know. Um, having a adultery, committing adultery with other people's um, partners, spouse, right? They will receive the five negative consequences. What are the five consequences, right? These are breaking the sexual misconduct. First, consequences. Family, you will not be in peace. Your family will not be at peace. In, For example, what supports a family? A good relationship, right? So, so your family is not in harmony because relationship is broken, cheating on each other. That's something we, I don't have to elaborate too much. You can see in the news. There's, there's even the TV show where, you know, you're, are you the father? You're not the father. And then that person has been... It sounds funny. It is funny. But when you look at that person who has raised a children that is not his for 24 years or something, you will feel a tinge of sadness and like oh this is what adultery really do to you you know it's awesome and fun if you look it in the you know pornographies and stuff like that you thought oh my god this is exciting but when you look at real life consequences god it's just painful it is painful because it's it's hurting yourself in the end right number one is your family will not you not be at peace with your family bad relationship with your family, had a, row, had a row with your family. Why? Number one is you're cheating on the partners. Your children will be angry at you. Your wife will be angry at you. Break up and stuff like that. Number two is wealth. You will lose the wealth that supports the family. All right? So without wealth, physically you cannot support. Without good relationship, mentally you're not, it's not longer a safe harbor. All because you want that three moments or five seconds of uh, secret happiness, uh, guilty pleasures. In a sense. So, it's just it's just a matter of, you know, do you want to have long-lasting benefit or you just want to have that few moment of excitement, it is really pleasurable, and then after that, suffer the consequences for long term. A lack of confidence if you have not family. It's not just applied to people with family. You know, it's just apply with you as a single person as well. Commit too much of that. That's including the, you know, sexual misconduct, including masturbation, etc., etc. Et you get very negative and thinking. You have that sense of cloud over your head. And it's very weighing down on you. And if you do not have proper help, you will sink back into that pleasure or comfort. And that is even worse so this is the thing, right? It's like investment. If you invest well and it gets more and more and more. Right? But same goes for these negative deeds. If you if you do it once, you have the joy of it and then you, you want a taste of, of it. It's just like a uh, good dish. Eat more and more and more and more and get more obese. And more obese you are, you feel more sad and like confidence you want to eat more to escape from it. Which ironically adds to your obesities. Same goes for sexual misconduct. And you do more and more and more and more sucking out of your um, energy and physically it sucks out of your um, you know, bone marrow, all right? Just read up on science, I mean, I'm pretty sure it, it really hurts your um, mental faculty as well. But those things are why we need to 
talk about this properly to the public so that it reminds myself, reminds other people. Because we are all exposed to this extensively. No, it's not like the old days where people need to actually get a book. Only then they have contact with this. Literally, it's in your phone. You know, even my time doesn't have phone. It's no care. There's no internet. Now they have smartphone. It's everywhere. You can do anytime. Right? But in this case, we're actually talking about with other people. But this is true. You see someone's appearance and then you get attracted to it. And then you get, you jump straight into that final act without understanding, you know, what it means if we do it. And we, if we have not adding the cost benefit calculation, then we will end up committing the deed going through a, a, a car crash of a relationship, a wreck of a relationship, and then only then realize, oh, I need to learn about this. It's different from you already understand all this, even though you might not experiencing it properly or understand it fully. You're aware of these consequences. And if with proper guidance, people will show you the example. You're aware, like, this is not what I want. All right. So always practice this kind of awareness. All right, so number one, no family, not in peace, not in harmony, you lose money. Number two, what did you say properly? For so dear, good about, since I built me some company and don't send you far. Okay, cool. So number two is no longer obvious in the modern family, modern society, because maybe back then, you actually, there's a law against adultery. I'm pretty recent before this uh, recent that it, it got disbanded like 1700s or something like basically adultery might get you you know landed in jail or even punishable by death stuff like that uh it looks like it's less consequences right in in human terms right however remember if in the laws of the human do not touch you laws of karma does not change that's why we need to have karma. Like I said, I can't emphasize anymore. At the end of the day, we need karma. Because laws of karma, will, it's, it's the one that governs everything. It's not an entity. It's just, you, you reap what you sow. You know, action and reaction. It's laws of physics, something like that. It's universal. It's there. It's always there. It always be there. It doesn't matter what religion you're in. If a good, enlightened religion, we always talk about karma. Directly, indirectly. They might not use the word karma. They might use the word, you know, redemption. Redeem yourself. Cleanse of your sins. If we don't understand what it means, you become a, 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 like an advertisement that has no hand uh, how. There's only, you know, yelling for slogans. But there's no substance in it. If you understand it, it's cause and effect. It's cost-benefit calculation. It's helping you navigating through this confusion of a human life. You, you can't see the consequences straight away, hence you committing it. All right? So, number two is being punishable by law, but this is not happening in our society. So we use another word, punishable by laws of karma. Punishable by a very negative laws of karma. And what we're talking about right now is the consequences, karmic consequences. Number three is, 自欺欺人, <laughs> Oh, number three is you felt ashamed. You felt like you know you were you were you were fraud. And then Master Shinko is like where is realistic? He's like nowadays thick skins are everywhere. You know there are many thick skins. Uh, in old days they you know might be a bit more shy about this kind of adultery stuff. Nowadays they were like yeah I slept that person yeah 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 they they even brag about it. You know there's no such thing as I mean, there's very, very hard to feel your conscience anymore. It was buried deep. Because the convention is different. Right now, it's like, just go ahead. Go ahead, unleash yourself. Chase after unlimited wealth, unlimited, you know, pleasures, you know, of the flesh, and etc., etc. Go ahead, uh, you know, pursue it, you know. As long as you don't break the law, and the law doesn't even talk about this. You know? like, I'm not killing people, I'm not, uh, stealing from people, so how am I wrong? 
stuff like that, you know. It's a very shallow um, kind of mindset. And because there's no taught teaching on this, of course, they can't go any further. So losing, you know, losing the sense of conscience means that you're not desensitized from this, you know, right and wrong in a way. It, we still need right and wrong. There's no ultimate right and wrong, but we still need this to navigate in our, in our life. Otherwise, we will do things without thinking it's harming other people. Wrong as in you actually harm them. As you harm yourself, you might not realize you harm other people. So losing that compass, moral compass, means that you're losing that sensitivity towards your deeds, the thing that you did, what kind of effect it has on you and other people, and also losing the kind of you know acknowledgement of other people's respect. You know, like you need to respect their person as well as a person. Instead, what replaces conscience is a hollow shell, like a zombie. You keep chasing after, you know, greed, hatred, ignorance, you know, the sensations, pleasures, sensual desires. Um, that means the depth, the negative consequences you accumulated is multiple fold, billion fold than the ancient people's these are um, trespassing, transgression. So because there's nothing to stop you from committing more grave acts and you get more and more um, unfettered. So that's unfortunate. Number four is, yes, that, there we go. Number four talks about consequences in the real sense. The first three is still talking about bonus, negative bonus, not positive. Negative uh, uh, light punishment. The, the fourth one is a real one. When you die, pass away, you will go into a sort of a hellish realm where you need to hug the pillars of fire to be punished. Literally, your flesh against a steaming hot metal. Pao pao lo. It's very. It's a very common thing, right? People who commit, in the sense of you know this cultural context. People who commit the um, adultery or sexual misconduct, usually the, you know, the the case is they will end up in there if they do not clean up their act quickly. Uh, and it takes a long, long, long time. In according to the sutra, is taking So that means it takes a very long time to get out of this. So number five is even you get out of the hellish realm you will fall into a animal realm. So you don't just go straight back to a human. You know, once you've fallen from grace, you will take a long, long time to get back to where you are. Because remember, all these things is your state of, is your um, state of your mind. And we understand in, in, in the kingdom, animal kingdom, there's a lot of animals they do not have separation of you know, families, degrees of closeness. You do not commit sexual deeds to the third cousin and be uh, and and be in be in this range, right? Confucius is especially strong on this one. Like he he codified this kind of mindset, and Chinese has been very very good at following it. If you look at other parts of the world, some of them marry their close cousins and stuff like that. In Chinese we don't even allow that. Tong Xing Bunen, same same surname cannot have family. So Li cannot have with me. Needs to be others. That effectively prevents you know this kind of uh, incestuous relationships that will lead to first biologically uh, dis disable. We will have a very disabled children production, and then of course it will mess up entire family relationships. But this is the scary part of the Sahara, our six rims. Do you want to deal with this again or not? If not, then go to Pure Land. Seriously. I plead you all. I had enough of this. Yeah, let's get out of here, man. <clears throat> okay, so back to the point. So number five is you fall into the animal realm and remember animal realm has no 
um, they do not avoid incestuous relationship. They have this problem as well. And so what means they are heavy. They 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 still committing these kind of deeds, even though they um, escape from hell, you know, in a way. So this one takes uh, this one takes precedence over a lot of the chapters because this one is something everyone did in their mind, if not in their body. Not everyone did. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't say that. This is something that a lot common people will commit that easily. You know, right? It's because it's just taking minds. It's just a thought kind of thing. And we thought thought is harmless, <clears throat> but it's not. It forms into action and speech. It forms the reality around you. And everyone nowadays are more loose on this thing. That means that they are more prone to commit this kind of deeds, adulterous, you know, adultery, you know, perversions. And then this perversion has formed into something criminal as well, you know, pedophile and stuff like that. It gets more and more common than, than before. And so this is why those are safety nets that we should not take off in the name of freedom or liberty or sexual liberation or anything. There are, there are safety nets there for a reason, right? There's a line we did not cross as a society. And if we allowed this to happen, which it already did, uh, you know, then there's no turning back, you know? Because you, how do you pull back a whole few generations of people who were, you know, allowing their lowest part of themselves to govern the upper part of themselves, basically. That lives their life with their lower half of their body instead of their conscience. A few generations, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right? Of course, I'm not talking about everyone. There are people, there are communities, you know, they are very strong, protective of that. And of course, I'm not talking about extreme you know, chastity over the top. You know, like the other end, the other extreme, that ends up with what? Even more pedophiles. I'm talking about a healthy relationship with this kind of topic because this is a human procreation thing. This is about, you know, of course, it's have have pleasure, have fun, but do it properly between husband and wife. And even between husband and wife, he shouldn't be doing too much. You know, the Buddhism also, also mentioned that. Master Ying Guang mentioned that in his... um. Uh, recent work, he did try to advise a young, not young, a um, a a a, a, a Jisu, one of the uh, lay Buddhists, you know, that keep visiting him. He's very good. This lay Buddhist practice a lot Buddhism earnestly. You know, he didn't commit sexual misconduct per se, but he did too much with his wife, and even when he's sick, he's still committing that acts, and uh, of you know population, stuff like that, you know, sexual deeds. And that hurts his body from recovering. He's trying to tell him that because Venerable Master Ying Guang, as you know, he's not a normal person. He can see from his face he's very weakened. He already hinted at him and said, you shouldn't do this. Of course, because, because as a monk, right, you don't just open up and say you shouldn't do this. But he did regret not saying that in, in his face because it actually will save his life. That you should not have too much you know, sex with your uh, wife is because it's going to hurt your body recovery. You just recover from cold, stuff like that. And doing that exerts energy because you're creating life, right? Obviously, you need to have energy from your body. That is very common sense. And you should do it only when, you know, both of in, in the mentally sound environment. So those, those things is something we, as a human being, we should not avoid unless you're going towards the path of monkhood and that's different but there's also there's only the minority of our society majority we continue as usual as a lay, lay person no matter what religion you are managing this is crucial in managing our future as human beings now we have few generations of very loose kind of um, definition of you know safety net you know and to pull it back is insurmountable not impossible, insurmountable. The only way we can do is like what we do now, the, our own communities, uh, have them well-informed choice, well-informed teaching, 
know, and guided by parents step by step. Do not tolerate on this matter. Do not allow it, but also do not overly suppress. Because you overly suppress, people are going to get more. It's like putting a red button in front of you. Do not press. It. Of course, people are going to press it, right? We are monkeys, right? In a sense, like our curiosity is very strong. Do not press the red button. Can you imagine that? Put it in the street and say, do not press the red button. Of course, they're going to press it. The best way is to, to, to treat it maturely. And how do you treat it maturely? You need to give them a full understanding on this, full talk. You know, how do you manage relationship between male and female? And, and nowadays, is it's different, right? And to be honest, even nowadays, this situation that happens, you know, is because of you know, this conduct was done too much. I know it's controversial and and it's up to you, Auntie, to, to leave it or leave it in the editing or put it out there. But, um, yeah, we, we do... It is one of the sexual misconduct in a sense. So, male and female is the normal way. But having said that, it does not negate our attitude towards everyone to be treated respect, be treated equally, to be treated with, you know, respect. You know, our attitude as a Buddhist, we should be always be you know, understand what's right, what's wrong, understand the bottom line, understand the laws of karma. Because in a sense, we are like lawyers in a way. You're aware of it, right? Like in my case, aware of it, but still committing some of it, which is bad. And hence, I will need to uh, experience double the punishment. Of course, everything can be changed. If I'm aware of it, and I commit the problem, aware of my problem, change it, asking people not to do it, and by example, then I got double the merits. Or ne negate the punishment, not negate, but lessen the punishment. Those things can be changed, right? Um, yeah, I'm taking extra long on this topic because this is very serious, and I um, myself is not innocent 100% for me as well. Not that I deep with any people, but yeah, I'm not going to deep in that. But I, I just want to express that sort of, you know, wished hope for future generation they no longer have to be victims subject to this kind of exposure and premature exposure ruins the innocence of them no it should be done in the right way properly managed and carefully cautiously uh, open up to them shouldn't be carelessly exposed to them. Okay, so this is why I start to appreciate Master Qing Gong's Yi Tiao Long system. But I can see a few potential issues of, you know, like how do we manage it properly in terms of um, this relationship with other people. Because the outside world is very different, right? If, you, if you're in the inside, you know, we need to expose them carefully to the outside but we cannot isolate them to the outside otherwise they will like a red button you you only want to press the red button it gets harder to control back it's better to let that desire to be um, subsidiary of your consciousness your um, conscience than so-called you know suppressing it altogether it's very hard Obviously, this problem will not exist if we have even earlier prevention. Like when you were a baby, when you were in, in mother's womb, you were well taught. And then when you come out, mother's was looking after you very well, not allowing you to touch unnecessary stuff like phone. And I don't, I can survive without the phone. Why don't my kid needs to have phone? Obviously, you can have like a offline kind of situation. Um, but what I'm referring to is not this special group of people that are able to have Yi Tiao Long kind of school. Those are more experimental. Realistic, day-to-day, -day, every people, everyday people, everyday parents, they can't avoid it in a way. They can. They can control the TV, uh, parental controls, right? YouTube, 
Netflix or that. But my advice is always, you know, always start from behavior, the, the groups, the crowd, expose yourself with. And if you happen to have children, you need to have, it has to be more important than your career to protect them from this. Even a good family, in my case, a good family you're in, this might be a part where people might be neglected. They might not look after what their children are looking at, what their children are seeing. And at a very young age, they might expose to this and hence addicted to this deeds you know, uh, and wasting a lot of their energy, literally physical energy, their jing qi and their, you know, their bone marrow and their mental energy on this, pursuit of this. And it's a waste. It's a really waste of resources. Nothing wrong with having, you know, crush or romance and all that, but it's it's a process. It, if it's becoming everything, overriding a lot of your life, part of your life, then it's it's a problem. So I think that would be my conclusion. Because people, when they do not see their consequences in, before their eyes, they cannot accept it. You no. Know? One is you have instantaneous joy. The other one is what if. What if not? You know, it might happen, it might not happen. Because you don't, can't see it, you, you say, okay, it might sound very reasonable, Dylan, but, you know, does it really happen? Yeah, like, would it be? <sighs> hey, if it actually happens before you, it's either too late or it's, you're lucky, you know. <sighs> yeah, it's like telling you don't don't run towards that direction because there's a, there is a cliff over there, and then all you can see is a beautiful, maybe a, you know, uh, all you can see is you know, a very nice place to go, and you don't want to stop. And what can we do? Yeah, a lot of people thought like those kind of things are just asking people to you know be good person, you know, do not um, the, yeah. Look at the result. Look at the result. Like look at the result of how the you know ancients rule their society. Yes, you can say dictatorship and all that, but you also need to be aware of you know beyond this shallow look at other people's society. You have to look at are they actually living in peace? Look at their mental in a sense. Are they having a peace of mind? Less dimension to worry about, less complications. Because the society has a very strict codified social conduct. And some of them is very bad, of course. Burning witches and all that it should not happen. Never I will never support that kind of ignorant act. However, like I said, there's nothing hundred percent. Generally speaking, they are much more simple. Peace of mind. Less know we wary like we have they only they might only have that when they actually having war you know, but you know instead of looking at them as oh they are technologically backward they die early hence they must be very terrible maybe not you know if you in the environment you know and you you you're generally in the normal people kind of level General happiness, you know, where do they get it from? Like, let's just assume all the physical condition taken care of. You know, their farm is not lacking in produced. They're paying the taxes and they have a good life. That peace of mind is there. That, And if you look at Chinese society, it's actually much more obvious. You know, like, let's not get blinded by those important big spots in the history, you know, those... Because those things happen like, imagine, 50 years, 10, 20, 20 years, once every 20, 30 years. Those are very, if you live as them, it's a very rare event. It's like thinking about, you know, like what happened 20 years ago, you know, financial crisis, and then another 10 years onwards. It's very, you need to think of that day-to-day -day level, and you start to realize, you know, maybe they have more peace of mind. You know, they they, they don't have to wear, wear the, the Young kids doesn't have to be too wary of strangers because they know they were taken care of in the village. 
the parents doesn't have to be constantly, you know, having their hearts hanging by they uh, uh, by their sleeves. I mean, hearts hanging every day, worry about whether whether the kids will be influenced by this and that. You know? Only when you reach to the very high level or you go into the city where you actually get a little bit more polluted. Their so-called pollution is actually very innocent in our in our context. Even they went to the prostitution house, not all of them do the deeds. They just sit there and drink drink coffee, drink tea. And just talk about talk about poetry and arts. And then for them it's like polluted. But in our case it was like okay, that's actually quite pure. So this is like the entire different level of you know mental wellness. Very different. Of course not everyone gets to have that level of luxury. You know, but like general generally speaking plus and minus like i say there's nothing uh you know one size one size fits all in terms of buddhism just buddhism um in number one practice is to let go of our greed habit and one of the most important serious greed habits that's troublesome is our lust letting go of lust is number one because this unfettered sexual deeds, which is, you know, lustful deeds, uh, is hurting our health, number one. We cannot get long life because of this. Look at emperors of the ancient times. They always have short life, 50 years and stuff, because they overdo it. They, can't, they are the only person who can overdo it. Like that. How many people, they, can, they all worry about their crops, trying to sell the crops so that they don't get starved. How do they have time to do that deeds every single day? Three times a day, something like that. No. So only the powerful, rich and noble have that luxury to sit there and do this. See, you sit there and do nothing, then you start to think about that. <sighs> That's doubt our condition. Yeah, yeah, personal experience. You need to be productive. Humans are productive anymore to like produce. So that's why Buddhism, we have a lot of tupo. They don't allow you to have time to sit down. You know, you go out, six, four, four thirty in the morning, morning class, chanting. Okay, now we you do the morning class. You know, very tired, but you keep chanting up until four. In our context, in our purely school context, then they sit in front of a wall and actually meditate properly. Not in front of what sit in a group and meditate in the morning. You might chant the, you know, the cultivation books. Why are we doing all this? Because we need to keep ourselves reminded of the Dharma. Get out of that net, you know, those desire net, and it's very, very hard work. It takes long immersion in the environment to get out of it, you know, to 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 make it a distant concept. Now we talk about you know the five precept, like a distant concept, like oh, it's not something we very common. It looks very ancient. It looks like outdated. Now when we talk about romance, we talk about like boys and girls, talk about sexual music, it sounds very, you know, very sexy, very modern. That's unfortunate. That's that's the that's 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 the environment we are reinforcing as a collective group. You know, we we are in this frequency, low frequency, not that. You know, the one of you know five precepts help have it's a common thing and peace of mind you know everyone is at peace even ancient times they show like it's very hard for these young handsome study scholars you know who are on their way to uh, imperial exam Chinese right and they always have you know situation of not not always like there's a lot of case study uh, uh, recorded of you know this young stay at home wife you know happen to live next next by it and then, and then um, this young scholar is studying, and but then because of his, you know, look is very good and stuff, good looking, handsome. And then this young um, wife, their whom husband has went out for work, you know, far away, few days, you have to stay outstation, few days. That's uh, you know, last for thoughts. This applies to women too, guys, not just men, um, you know. They have the adulterous thoughts. You know, I want to have one night with this person, stuff like that. And usually, you know, 
that is the demarcation point whether this person is going to be successful in his career or not. And, and it has been recorded so frequently that it's not, it can't be a story. It's real. And some of the people are, 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 are prominent figures in politics, Chinese, ancient Chinese politics. And those who made it in their imperial exam, you know, they prevented themselves from committing adulterous deeds. Because back then, no one knows. They're just hiding you and you, just you and her in that little uh, a sh- a shacks. The problem is the heaven is up there because they have that concept. It's a common thing. The heaven is looking. Yes, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's sexy. It's you know hiding in in a in a in a corner. But heaven is looking, and you have an entire future ahead of you. Which one do you want? Make a choice. And even those people who immerse themselves in this kind of teaching had a hard time holding themselves back. Let alone us who are in in the entire different direction. Like, oh man, let's do it. And that mean that means if you're able to overcome this in this current era, that means you're not a normal person. You have a deep meditative ability. You know, you have cultivate many lifetime. It's like playing games, level level ten, that's what ancient people has to deal with. Level ten level of sexual misconduct. What we have to deal with when we're born into this world is level ninety. Level 80. Well, maybe not 9. It's too much. Level 70. Immediately you have to deal with one of the most serious, rampant, unfettered uh, kind of uh, environment, sexual environment. And you need to be able to hold yourself back. Pull yourself back from getting sucked into it. Right? That means you, you did the deeds, but you always you need to pull it back. It's very hard. So good luck. Uh, prevention in Buddhism, right? Uh, just just to finish off this sentence, is a very long. Is you know everything they did everything. They have mental food, which is morning cultivation, and then you see the four chi, the seven day cultivation, right? Morning cultivation. What did they do? Finish, and then you just sit there and think. No, noble silence. You don't talk. So that it doesn't invoke any sort of wandering thoughts that will lead to reduce the possibility. Right? It's a statistic game. And then you immerse yourself in the sutra, chanting the sutra. It's it's a mental exercise, gymnastic. You just keep telling yourself. Not keep telling yourself, it's natural. You just chant it. You know, you don't even need to think too much. You just focus on it. And then lunchtime, right? Before twelve o'clock. So that you don't get too late and you get sleepy. Of course, you still get sleepy, but you know you, you get into a habit over time. And then during lunchtime, they will talk about you know think about the food that came into your bowl, appreciate it. You know, always apply that kind of more positive mindset. Everything there is perfectly. You know, they were well designed to improve and enhance your mental clarity. It's cleaning up the clock, and the longer you are in that environment, and the more earnest you are in learning the theory and practice of the sutra, the better you are, the more resilient you are. Uh, of course, when you go out, it's a test. You know, when everything's plunged, your five senses. But there are reasons why they were designed that way. They are not just simply singing. Uh, I don't say I'm singing. I'm actually chanting, uh, performing a service. First service is to yourself, to be honest. Because you actually having to remember everything. And then it's the service to others. So those are those are very important stuff. And then after that we have what? Afternoon. The whole afternoon is near four. Five four. You know, chanting, praying, walking meditation. It might sound very monotonous if you just hear it from here. But if you actually have a, give it a chance, like a few days to immerse in it, you know, you feel like everything is because it's, everything is very well routine, obviously this is only ha- can only happen in a short period of time. You know, we don't have the very we might have still in in, in China, the modern China, we still have that community, the Buddhist community. They are very diligent, but they are they don't have like all the luxuries that we have. But they that makes their dharma hunger even better, and that dharma hunger replaces the hunger for worldly desires. 
you know eventually right in that environment if you stay long enough i never stay longer than seven days unfortunately um if you stay like years you know and not allowing the bad habits to take over that means you're always looking at it always always be on your guard in the right way you know be be aware um you're actually able to attain a certain level of tranquility you know um, it's not something we can market or something, but you, you will feel more peace at peace. In the end of the day, it's all about peace at heart, you know, peace of mind, peace of mind. No matter how uh, how well we eat, if you have no peace of mind, you know, even you can you can be the richest man in the world, richest woman in the world, you can't be happy. You, know, you always worry, worry, burden, burden, carry. But if you have that peace of mind, even though you're just eating a plain porridge for the morning, that porridge tastes like one of the most delicious, sweetest, I don't know, nourishment. Because you work very hard in the past, previous days. You work, you chant, and of course, they always incorporate the chupo, which is, you know, going out and do the housework, chores. Who else is managing this? This is a self-volunteer organization. Everyone's got to do their part. That's the best thing of it. You are part of it. You know, the bowl is for you to wash. The dish is for you to cook. The the bed is for you to make. This is not a hotel. This is your home, in a sense. Take care of it so that it will take care of your soul, in a way. Take care of your mind. Take care of your um, practice, cultivation. So if you... the, the This is the part where it, clarif- it purifies it in a, in a good way. So I encourage anyone who have opportunity to in contact with this kind of you know, Dharma place, especially in as a pure land practitioner, we we have a lot in US, in Australia, around the world, thanks to Master Ching Kong's propagation and his teachers and Master Nian Kong, Nian Zhu, and other great masters as well. But in our context, you know, encourage anyone, you know, if with the Pure Land Learning Center that's still affiliated with Master Ching Kong's teaching. Go and visit, you know, go and participate one or two days retreat. If there's no retreat, just chant, follow their chanting. But my suggestion is to sign up for seven days retreat. This is the best, one of the, one of the strategy to deal with excessive exposure to the five senses. And eventually you will get sick of it as well. You know, like that's all that is. It's amazing in first go. In terms of five uh, sensual pleasures, you know the the worldly pleasures, but the longer it gets, the more dull it gets. Always need to switch up different things. Dharma pleasure is different. Dharma joy, we call it dharma joy, right? It's it's still a ple- joy, right? And the best thing is, this is why the third level of um, uh, enlightenment in original Buddhism, which is anatta an- anagami right before Arahant able to let go of this worldly pleasure because it's nothing compared to the joy he's experiencing the joy he's experiencing does not need to be constantly refreshed like your TV you need to constantly switch channels mediums oh higher resolution better resolution it's it's nothing for them they are coming from inside out the joy is flushing out endlessly it's an endless spring of happiness. First thing, free from worry. Hence, they are very healthy. Committing sexual misconduct, you always worry because someone's going to cut you out. It's like, oh my God, someone's looking at me when I'm doing the deeds. Or someone's, uh, you know, husband's going to cut me into three pieces because I slept with, you know, I commit adultery with his spouse. Stuff like that. You always look out for, for dangers. You know, and then you don't dare to look at people because you're afraid they will look through you your deeds. That's if you already have a sense of shame. Of course, if there is no sense of shame, that's different. You just do it openly like an animal. What can you do? Let, you know, let the karma take its course, unfortunately. So back to this point, before I, I, I want to end this up, wrap this up. Uh, in Buddhist context, uh, how we overcome this is, you know, we have this system, you know, have this chanting and all that. At night time, you sleep at 10, not too late, so that you don't overthink. Uh, ideally, you don't talk, don't over chat. You just focus on chanting Amitabha. All right, and food. 
do not eat the five, you know, five uh, types of vegetables. Vegetarianism is, is taken for granted. You don't eat meat, of course. You don't eat fish. You know, those those are already common. We're talking about no five um, types of vegetables that will disrupt your hormones. First one is hun lah. We call it a hun. First one is onion. Second one is shives. Then garlic. No. Last one. What is last one? Leek. No. No, come on. Yeah, onion. Onion and leek. Then what about chong, spring onion? So something like that. You know, those kind of uh, 小蒜, 大蒜, 葱菜, 韭菜, uh, 洋葱. So back then there's no onion in China. Not that kind of onion that we use. But it's considered the family, right? The family of this shives, spring onion, onion, um, yeah, garlic. Uh, why do we, why that, what did Buddha specific, specify these five types of food? Um, because when you cook these five types of food, it will invoke, uh, it will not, it has to be a huge amount, right? I'm not saying that you eat one bulb, suddenly you want to do things. That's that's not that's not rational. Um, talking about eating a lot, it will indirectly, you know, invoke that hormone, you know, that, that hormone that sing chong dong that makes you want to commit the sexual deeds. Right? It will. It's it's a tendency kind of thing. It makes you more tendency to do that. And then the other one is if you eat it raw, you get angry easily because it invokes a different part of your you know hormones you know that 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 um bow up your um, livers so i'm translating now. all right so those things physically has you know effect on us by any food but this one if taken in huge amount that's a problem right but we're talking about actual practicing some people actually follow it which is respectable um, but if it's just small or once in a while, not like eating every single day, it's fine. Unless you, you know, in the temple, they will usually never use garlic, any of this. This is laid down by Buddha, so no one will use that. And usually it's vegan food as well in temple. They will usually don't have dairy products, milk products, eggs in the temple. It will be just pure vegetables. The whole point is to clarify, to set up many nets, safety nets, so that you can channel your energy on chanting Amitabha, on cultivation. That's it. Uh, medicine is always the exception. Okay, don't don't say no when it's you're sick, you need garlic peel. Those are perfect against cold. I use it a lot. It helps me a lot. And medicine is always special. Right? So point is, they want to avoid conditions that will lead you to commit this kind of uh, misconduct you know this is what we call compassion who says buddha has no feeling no 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 love of course he has he's the most compassionate person right? because he always think very far very deep how to benefit people not just on the surface not just one time one life but many life all right so i hope we can take this um to this session uh, with the perspective of you know, I don't want to have long-term regret, pain later. So I am able to entertain, to start with, these thoughts of self-restraint, able to turn down, uh, tune down this kind of pursuit if we're already up in that. If we're not, then we strengthen this immune system, you know, proper conduct between uh, Myself to myself, you know, my, my mind. I you know, don't want to entertain that. Last we talk too much. You know, always think about consequences of disease. You know, it might cause a lot of cancers, you know, prostate cancers, etc. Uh, other stuff, you know, uh, might cause uh, me the good relationship, good relationship because my energy is not there. I'm not present. I'm always avoiding. I might cause my family if I already have family, you know, a lot of troubles. You know? And I do not mean only between two persons, I'm talking about with yourself as well. But that's also something you need to avoid. 
No. Just because not you didn't do it with other people doesn't mean you didn't have the thoughts or you didn't have the means to do it by yourself. And every one of those are hurting you anyway. If you understand there is a better way to gain happiness, pleasure in the right way, then you would not want to waste time on this. Um, this is a gradual process. Give yourself time, but always allow this this space in your mind saying that I will overcome this um, one day. And even now, I will overcome it, no matter how many times I fail. This is a, how to say, holding game, battle of attrition. Whoever holds out to the last wins. If that one, the last, you know, last put thoughts and dispersions and adulterous thinking, overpowers you in the very end of your lifetime till the very end then of course you will suffer the consequences and if we're able to overcome it able to you know understand the real benefits peace of mind right the real benefit is peace of mind peace of mind gives rise to everything it's like a fertile land that grows everything you know grows your wealth grows your good relationship grows your happy family grows your um, health all right Grows your dharma, joy, grows your uh, wisdom. So you need that peace of mind. Otherwise, your mind is very like earthquake, keep moving non-stop, or like typhoon, keep spinning. How can you have a good, healthy development? Right? You can't. You can't grow anything on it. It's a. It's a. It's an infertile land. Okay. Good luck. Ami tofu. You can see that this is a very serious thing. <laughs> oh, don't mind this too. Uh, yeah, I need to change it. All right, let's dedicate the merit and <laughs> call it a day. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings from those of those on the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion. Leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo, Kan En. Thank you so much. Have a good night and uh, good morning to you. Have a good breakfast to you. Yes. Amitofo. 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 A mi to fo 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 a mi to fo